Edgar Cayce's Temple of the Living God Part 1 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The promise has been, if ye will be my children, if ye will be my son, I will be thy God, individual. There has been the promise, I will meet thee in thy holy temple. The body is the temple of the living God. The mind is the active force. The soul is that which may make for the connection. 4. Thy body is indeed the temple of the living God, and there he hath promised to meet thee. There, in thy body, his awareness may be seen, may be heard, may be felt, may be tasted, yea, experienced in all manners, but the reality is to self, not to others. 4. Of thyself ye may do nothing, but as his spirit, his truth may work in and through thee, ye may indeed be a channel, a blessing, a way for others to become aware of their relationship also to that divine experience. As the body is the temple of the living soul, the temple of God, what of it? Is it to become dust again and again, yet being associated with the soul, the spirit of the individual that had been lent such, or had used such in creation, as the abode of their existences, their experiences? Is it to see corruption? Is it to be lost entirely? Is it to be glorified, spiritualized? Know that thy body is indeed the temple of the living God. And he has promised to meet thee. Keep that body as the temple of God. Supply it with all the beauties, as ye would a physical service to him that ye would honor most in thy heart, in thy body, in thy mind, in thy purpose. And let it ever be with that spirit of truth as manifested in him, I go unto the Father, that where I am ye may be also. It may be thine now if ye will accept it, as ye did in the upper room. Know indeed that thy body is the temple of the soul, and thus the temple of God that ye may know within self. Then prepare that body to meditation, to prayer, that ye may be guided aright in thy choices in the present day. Begin first and analyze thyself, thy purposes. Know that thy body, thy mind, thy soul are one. Thy body is the temple. Treat it as such, the temple of God. Don't abuse it, don't misuse it, but, in mind and in spirit, as well as in physical outlook, keep it as a place worthy of thy Father God, and thy Saviour, the Christ, meeting with thee in that body, that mind, that soul. Then, know in what ye believe and know who is the author of same. His purpose has been, if ye love me, ye will keep my commandments, and if ye keep my commandments I and the Father will come and abide with thee. The promise has ever been, look within. Meet thy Maker in the temple within. For the body is indeed the temple of the living God, and he has promised to meet thee there, in the Holy of Holies, in the mount within. And his promises are sure. How has been the pattern in such meetings? Has not the edict been ever, Purify yourselves, your bodies, for on the morrow thy God would speak with thee? As thou not learned, he is ever the same, yesterday, today and forever. Then prepare thyself in that way and manner that seemeth to thee, in thine experience, in thy consciousness to meet thy Maker. Then as ye use those material preparations, they only give to the body a greater consciousness, through their application to the body, of the necessity of every atom cooperating in that direction. And ye will find thine experiences, thine aid in health, thine aid in mental application will be augmented. And ye will find help. Do that. Be consistent with self, in its physical, its mental, its spiritual life. Know that while separate, these are one. For the body is the temple of the living God. The influences, then, as are his manifestations, are one within thy experience. Apply them, then, not as a harmful effect to anyone. For as is understood, while the body is body, mind, soul, as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they each have their different work to do. But each phase should be coordinate and cooperative with every other. How can the rest of humanity be expected to reach his perfection, 
when they start with a less divine origin. O oh, that the children of men would gain that which is the purpose for procreation in the earth. And start within their own selves, in those periods of activities that bring about the channel for, or the means of the entering in of the holy ones, that ideal. For he is the way, and he asks that all follow in that way. And as two souls come in a union of purpose, not a gratifying of earth, not a gratifying of the earthly impulses and desires, but that they, too, may be used as channels through which souls may enter, there may be brought into the earth those that may quicken. For all must be lifted up even as he. But through the natural, the unnatural means as he entered, all become then in that purpose, in that oneness as the natural way, the natural source. Does this mean that the world will evolve into bringing souls into the world in the manner that Mary did? Souls will evolve into the manner to be able to bring into the world souls, even as Mary did. And these may come as the souls of men and women become more and more aware that these channels, these temples of the body are indeed the temple of the living God, and may be used for those communications with God, the Father of the souls of men. Turn within and not without, as the inclinations are at times when thy disturbances arise, and know that he hath promised to meet thee in thy temple. And thy body is the temple of thy soul, the temple of the living God. And there he hath promised to meet thee. And his promises are sure, if he will but allow thyself to draw upon them in joy alike as in sorrow, in the ups as well as the downs. For he thy God is not a God of wrath, nor of hate, but a God of love, for he is love. Hold fast to that promise which has ever been in him. Look not to those forces or influences that are earthbound, but rely rather upon those promises that have been from the beginnings, be my people, and I will be thy God. Call upon the Lord while he may be found in thine experience, and you will find he will meet thee in thine own temple. For thy body is the temple of the living God, and there he has promised to meet each and every one. Know what is thy ideal, where thou art seeking to go, but that all the forces of the universe and nature are expressed and manifested in thee. For thy body is indeed the temple of the living God, that ye may meet him. To enjoy the glories rather than conveniences of the Holy Spirit within, train thy spiritual self to know, even as ye forgive ye are forgiven. For this is law, this is love, this is divine, that ye meet every wit, yea, but in him. God no longer seeketh the sacrifice, but the sacrifice once being made for all is ever present in thine own inner soul. For thy body is indeed the temple of the living God, and in same he meets thee. They're not to demand, they're not to command, but they're to cooperate with the divine in thee. And lo, it hath been given as of old, not who will ascend into heaven to bring him down, or who will go over the sea that a message may be brought, but lo ye find him today in thine own heart, in thine own temple. For indeed the body is the temple of the living God, and there he has promised to meet those who seek to know his biddings, those who would find the way. And lo, he is the way, the word, the peace, the life, the light unto all who sit in darkness in their own selfish ways. He hath promised to meet thee within the tabernacle of thine own consciousness. For thy body indeed is the temple of the living God, and in thee there comes the answer for that as he would have thee do. And if thy choice is in that direction that is given by thy own inner self, ye become aware of his presence as abiding with thee day by day, in every phase of thy experience. For as he hath given, try me, and I will prove myself to thee, in the choice of thine own inner consciousness. These then be the measures, be the sources, be the channels through which the self may gain the greater understanding, find the greater unfoldment, have within thine own self the greater consciousness that he hath work, he hath a purpose in thy experiences day by day. As hath been said of old, fearful indeed it is to fall into the hands of the living God, unless thy purposes, thy desires towards thy fellow man are in keeping with the will of the Father. What, then, is his will? that ye may eschew evil, and do good unto those that ye contact day by day. For as ye meet, as ye think, as ye do unto the least of thy brethren, ye do unto that God in thy holy self. 
For as ye meet unto him, ye meet unto thy Maker within, yea and without. For know that his temple in thee is holy, and thy body-mind is indeed the temple of the living God. Thus may ye find oft that upon the horns of the altar many of the burdens may be laid aside, and that the sweet incense of faith and hope and prudence and patience will arise to bring the consciousness, and the awakening of the glories that may be thine. For he has promised to meet thee in thy own temple. For thy body is indeed the temple of the living God, and he has promised to meet thee there, in thy own meditation, yea, in thy own prayer, and let it be much as this, though in thine own words, in thine own message. Lord, Maker of heaven and earth, in thy love, in thy grace, look upon thy handmaid who waits before thee and asks for thy guidance, thy direction. Put into my mind and my heart, O God, that I should think, that I should do, day by day. And help me to give to those I meet, in my daily life, a word of cheer, an act of love, in such measures that they, too, may know thee. Even as thou hast loved us, so love I my fellow man. Use me, O God, in thy way.